um, or the South. I mean, it's it's America at large. There are a lot of churches that uh, they have a cross on their door, and they have a cross, they have a steeple, and uh, they have carpet, and they have pews or chairs, and they read from the Bible, and they sing the same worship so songs you and I sing. But as I look around, I see a lot of houses of worship that have a form of godliness, but they're lacking a power that we were told is available to us as, vi as victorious believers. How many could say hallelujah to that? It's true. Amen. And so where we wouldn't uh, put up with it in life, any other time or place, we put up with it in church from week to week. And can I just say, it's more than just from week to week. How many believe that church isn't just something we do on a Sunday or Wednesday? Yes. We are the church. We are the sign of God. So it's not just, we're not just the church on Sunday and then for the rest of the week we have identity confusion. We are the church, correct? Yeah. And so we have rights. And you need to know that, that you have rights as a believer, and those rights meant so much to the Father that He sent His Son to ensure that you could live with those rights in full effect every day in your life. Amen. That how many can say hallelujah to that? Yes. Just say victory, because that's it. Look at the person next to you and say victory. Just tell your neighbor, say notify your face, get happy. Victory is yours. Even if you need new teeth, God will give you new teeth. Amen. <laughs> I mean, we've all been there. Amen. The fun parts when people try to tell you they don't know why their teeth are falling out at like 25 years old. You, know, you have an idea why it's happening. But I, <laughs> we got prayer lines for that too. You know. And and can I just say I want to see the church filled. I'm going to tell you. I don't. This is going to be probably the first thing that's going to cause people to either fall in love with, with me or go running out. I will just tell you, we got this thing all messed up. We got people going to hell, and we're blaming them for going to hell, and they're, you know, they're just hell raisers and they're going to hell. And I'm telling you, we've just let a whole lot of hell loose in our churches. We've let, let a whole lot of hell loose in our homes. We've let a, let, let a whole lot of hell loose uh, in our, on our jobs and, and you know, just between the hashes of life, the 24 and the 7, there's a whole lot of hell that we condone in our lives. And I'm telling you, as children of God, hell has no place. It doesn't even have any jurisdiction in our lives. Amen. Hell can't give you tickets for where you're going in Christ today. Yeah. He has, the devil has no authority to give you tickets for who you are in Christ today. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Yes. You you don't have to settle for it. Yes. So when you go to these quote unquote houses of worship or these quote unquote conferences or wherever you go to get the gospel, even if it's here, you need to know that if I am preaching a short changed gospel that keeps you from living fully turned on for God and fully empowered and fully victorious, then you have every right with protocol and honor to ask me in an honorable way, what the heck is going on with what you're preaching, brother? Because I signed on for something different. I signed on for Holy Ghost, signs and wonders, victorious believer's life. I signed on for, come on, the wonder of the cross, yeah. forgiveness by His blood, the yeah. stone's been rolled away. I'm heavenly minded. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I'm going, I, I've got my hand in His hand. I'm moving forward. And, and so, why do I have to stay married to hell just because? And when I say married to hell, I'm telling you, there are a lot of believers, they get in prayer lines, for soul ties, they want to get soul ties removed. How many would believe that's important to do? Yes, yes. I'm going to really stir you. Yeah, come on. You want to get that soul tie, somebody will tell you, man, you can't move on with your new marriage because you still got a soul tie to your old wife back there. How many have ever heard that before? Yeah. You can't move on with where you, you want to be free and you want to live a, a clean and sober life, but man, you can't do that with that blinking in your past. How many, right? And they go, that's a soul tie. Come on. Yeah. I'm talking to a lot of you because I hang out with a lot of you and I hear you say that. Yeah. Around the dinner table. Well, you know, Pastor, they got that soul, you know, they got all those soul ties all up in their house. What's going to happen? 
This is you talking to me, and then you're going to look at me crazy like you don't know what a soul tap is. <laughs> this is you talking to me. <laughs> Pastor, can we have that person in that does the conference on soul ties and how to break them, and can you bring the next deliverance? This is you talking to me. And then I start talking about soul ties, and everybody's going, mm, I don't wonder who they're talking about. It's the people on the other side of the room over there. Come on. No, it's us. How many know we got to break some things? Yeah. we got to get rid of some things. I mean, I remember when I first came back from Africa, I had all these great things from Africa that I bought. Man, I couldn't have one barbecue have the church people over because all the intercessors want to burn all my African stuff. Oh, right? Everything I got from Africa, you can't have that. That's evil. You can't have that. That's a carving of an elephant. You know what that means? One lady said, we're getting all this stuff. I said, let me see what you got. All your wood carvings from Africa. I said, what's in there? An elephant, a tiger, a zebra, a monkey. We're throwing all this in the fire. She said, it's all occult stuff from Africa. And I said, no, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. And I said, yes, it is. You don't know who carved that stuff for you. I said, actually, I do. It's a little intercessor that was my armor bearer's uh, friend, prayer warrior friend, and she carved all that for me. And you're wanting to burn it up. How many know some people can just yeah. go crazy doing stuff? Yeah. Just throwing everything out. I mean, just burning everything. Yeah. I mean... And I remember those days. People were would put the records on and we would play records. We remember this, Sydney. We used to listen to records backwards to find out what they were really saying to us. Yeah. This is way before. Now, now, I know the crowd I'm in. How many remember records, LPs? Raise yeah. your hand. Yeah. How many remember that they went this way, yeah. right? Right. But remember, you could turn them this way and yeah. hear what was going on this way. Yeah. Right? And then people would go, oh my God, I had no idea they were telling us to smoke marijuana and <laughs> blow up schools. You know, I mean, that's what it would be now, right. right? It started out right. I mean, it started out, I mean, we remember when Queen had the first backward masking thing and Queen Freddie Mercury saying, I decided to smoke marijuana and everybody thought that was the worst thing. Tell me what they'd be saying now if they were doing Ooh, subliminal messaging. Yeah. Let me take it one further. We ain't playing records no more, so you can't backward mask a CD unless you just flip everything digitally and play it backwards. How much stuff is hidden in there that you don't even know about? That's right. That's right. But you want to go burn everything up and talk about soul ties, and I agree with you. But what about soul ties to ministries that God never condoned for you to be a part of? Right. Wow. What about ministries that have kept you in bondage for decades telling you you're going somewhere in Jesus, but it's the same old thing every year. It's the same song and dance. It's the same deal. It's the same thing. And yet, everything else in your life, you've been getting rid of soul tie after soul tie after soul tie after soul tie, and you wonder what soul tie is next. And I'm telling you, some people have deified and they've put their pastor and they've put their church on a pedestal that's reserved for God. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yep. Soul ties. Yes. But that's my pastor and I have a burden for him. I'm telling you, man, your pastor is never your life source. Never. If your pastor is your life source, your life source will live and die with him. That's yeah, it. right. If your pastor, if I'm your life source, you're in serious trouble. Right. I'm just telling you right now. You say, well, no, David, I know you're a prayer warrior and I know you and Gina pray for us and... And I'm telling you, and that's true, we do, but I'm telling you, if I'm your life source or I'm your go-to when you need to really touch heaven, I'm telling you, if you don't know how to touch heaven on your own, you're in trouble. You've got to be able to touch heaven on your own. Just like you've got to be able to determine what you want to keep in your life and what you want to get rid of in your life that may be a soul tie so that you can get into victorious Christian living. So that you can get into your destiny. And can I just say this? You've heard it probably a million times. But we always hear, go where you're celebrated, not where you're top tolerated. Right. And I am telling you, it truly is a season of being around people who celebrate you. Come on. Thank you. Lord. You should be around people. Now listen, you're not always going to be around people who celebrate you. But you should spend the bulk of your time around some people that celebrate you and not people that are constantly wanting to tear you down. It's a sad thing when you're on the street and the people that you're on the street with that don't know you from Job's turkey, they have more compassion about who you are as a 
individual and they have more just good faith belief in you as an individual than people sometimes we've known for 20, 30, 50 years in church. Right. How do you know that I'm telling the truth? Yes, amen. We've got to get past the facade and we've got to get into what's real. That's right. We've got to take off the mask. What keeps us from living victorious? What keeps us from living fully delivered? I would say one thing that keeps us from living fully delivered is facades, masks, That's right. Amen. false walls. Yes. How many have ever been around someone who puts up a false wall? Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. In other words, when you're hanging out with them. Now, some of you, you think the gift of suspicion is an actual spiritual gift. It's not. <laughs> Some of you, your favorite exercise is jumping to conclusions. That's not it. But I will tell you, sometimes you hang out with a person and you know that you know that you know that they're struggling. You know that they are. But you can't ever get past the false wall so that you can get to the core of what the struggle is and where they need the victory and where they need the antibiotic, come on, where they need the healing yeah. ointment. How many know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And, and how many know everybody needs some healing balm now and again, yeah. right? Yeah. How many know that even warriors get stuck every now and again with the tip of an arrow? Even warriors yeah. get nicked up, and we've got to have a place so where we can go and get healed up. And I'm telling you, yeah. as a body, we can't afford to be so insulated that we, we literally... We're so insulated that we isolate. You're so insulated. How many understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. You get so insulated that you literally isolate and you insulate. And how do you insulate? How do you keep people at arm's length? You put up false walls because most people want to push boundaries. So to really get a person to where you can manage someone who's pushing you in areas that you don't want to get into, the only way you can manage certain personalities is to put up false walls or facades and see as people on in this world we've learned that is a way to do business but that's not god's way to do business Amen. he doesn't want us to have false walls up that's man's way in other words if man sees a weakness then man comes in we don't want to show weakness because if i show weakness then i'm vulnerable and if i'm vulnerable then i could get hurt or get burned but yet god says just walk open come on Walk with no facades. Walk with no walls up. Walk with no... It doesn't mean you don't have any boundaries. It doesn't mean that you live a principle-free life. It just means that the principles that you adhere to are heaven's principles. Amen. It doesn't mean that you don't have boundaries. It just means the boundaries that are set aren't set by man. It's not set by a preacher. It's not set by an evangelist. It's not set by a radio preacher or television evangelist. It's set by the Holy Ghost of God. Can you say hallelujah? Amen. And He sets those boundaries. Amen. He tells you where you're going to go, where you're not going to go. But false walls and facades and masks, they have to go. For us to really see revival, we're going to have to see the walls come down. How many would agree with that? Amen. How many just lift your hands to heaven and just say, I want to see revival. I want to see revival. How many can say, I want to see revival in Acadiana? I do. How many can just pray a little bit in the Spirit and just say, I want to see revival in Acadiana? I want to see it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. The false walls. The facades. The masks. The things that keep us from pressing in and getting everything that's ours as sons and daughters. How many are tired of settling? Yeah. Yes. How many are ready to break free from the old? Yeah. Yes. And how many are ready to, by faith, go into something new yes. in the Spirit today? Yes. Lift your hands to heaven and just say, that's me. Yes, Lord, that's me. Oh, Ramasaya. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory. Today was a really interesting day because we were we we weren't in a hurry. We were completely on top of our schedule in a good way today. And uh, how many have had days where you're not necessarily on top of your schedule in a good way? How many have had days where the schedule's on top of you? Yes. Yes. 
Some of you have a lying spirit. We'll cast it out later. <laughs> Listen, you need to know, we have a big family. We have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, we have uh, a lot of stuff going on in ministry and life. We have a lot of friends. Uh, and, and there's a lot going on. But I will tell you, when the hecticness of life starts to take over, that's when, if you're not careful, the enemy will get you in a trap to where when you get hectic and when things get topsy-turvy and hectic and you feel like, man, I'm coming unglued, that's when the enemy, watch it, that's when he comes to you and tries to get you to settle for less. Yes. Every time. In other words, when you're tired, when you're at your weakest moment, that's when the enemy is going to come to you. Yes. And, and here's what I'm saying. That's when that bowl of beans, Sydney, looks really attractive to someone who's starving. Forget the birthright. How many remember Jacob and Esau? Forget the birthright. I'm going to take my birthright, my entire inheritance. I'm going to sell it out for a bowl of bean soup. Why? Because of the aroma drawn me in because I'm hungry. And in the moment, I have to have it. But the truth is, sometimes things that give you instant gratification, I'm telling you, that's just the enemy trying to get you to settle. And you've got to be firm in your faith and in your convictions. And you've got to be true north in the Holy Ghost. And you've got to say as a believer, I'm not going to settle for anything less than what God promised me. I'm not going to settle for anything less than me being blessed financially on the job. I'm not going to settle for anything less than my children following Jesus. Amen. Come on, somebody. I'm not going to settle for my children being addicted to drugs. I'm not going to... Are these your children or my children? I think we're just talking about our people. Can you say hallelujah? I'm not settling for the enemy sending my children down a grease pole to hell anymore. I am taking... Uh, I am I am rising up and violently the violent are, I'm going to take it violently by force and the enemy has to flee seven different ways he doesn't have jurisdiction or permission to mess with my offspring with my children with my mother with my family with my finances with my health I'm telling you right now I am a child of God I'm a victorious child of God I've got heaven on my mind this world's economy is not my economy. This government here, I, I love the United States of America, but I'm a citizen of heaven. Can you say hallelujah? And I am not, can I also say I'm not settling for sickness just because I'm supposed to deal with a little sickness either. I am not settling. If the Bible says that I have it, then I'm going to spend my life trying to figure out why it's not manifesting. If he said it's mine, then it's mine. What I've got to do is take off my glasses of doubt and I have to put on my faith glasses. I have to dare in my faith. That means I have to step out of the boat. That means I can't just talk about it anymore. That means that when I put my foot down, I have to believe that I'm not going to sink. When I got out, get out of the boat, I've got to know I'm hearing the voice of God. But you can bet I'm not going to settle for sickness. I'm not going to settle for poverty. I'm not going to settle for lack. I'm not going to settle, settle for the devil sifting my children like wheat. Come on. I'm I'm not going to settle for the devil having a foothold in my marriage or a stronghold in relationships. I am a victorious child of God in the spirit of the living God, in the spirit of the risen Christ lives on the inside of me, the lion of the tribe of Judah. I am not bound to this earth's laws anymore. I am not bound to the laws of sickness. The doctor may give me his facts or his report, but it just moves me into a place to where I say, whose report will I believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. That's the report that I want. That's who I'm lining up with. Somebody lift up a shout. And so if it's revival, I want it, but I'm not going to settle. And I'm not settling whether I'm at Ruth's Chris or whether I'm at Burger King or Checkers. I'm not settling. If we were on our way here, like I said, great day. Just had just a few minutes. Just wanted five little Parmesan nuggets. 
They sounded weird because Checkers has a habit of making it sound amazing and look amazing in the pictures. They bring it out and it looks like something that just fell off the bottom shelf of a microwave reject. So I've had that happen, but Checkers always draws me in because they name their food cool names and I don't know, when I'm in a hurry every now and again, it makes sense to me somehow. <laughs> so I just thought, well, Gina and I said, well, we'll drive through and I'm gonna grab these. And she says, I'm not hungry for anything from here. That's, I should listen. That's when your wife has the word of the Lord on something. Listen to that. <laughs> just rebuke the fat right off your body. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a secret. I start every morning, 30 minutes, rebuking fat off my body. I've been doing it for the past 30 years. And I want to tell you, it doesn't seem to be working. You'd think I've been rebuking the skinny off my body. <laughs> the fatness is coming. But today I just thought, and I eat good now. You need to know I eat right, is what I'm telling you. My problem is I eat crazy food, and generally it's people who won't be told no that make me eat crazy food. Family members, old ladies that cook good, you know what I'm talking about. Old school cooking draws me in. But today, it was checkers. And so, uh, if you're wondering where, the, where I'm going in this message, we're checkers, just enjoy yourself right now. I'm your host, you're checkers. Pulled up. Gina said, uh, I'm not eating from here. And I thought, okay, cool then. Then it'll be one more wing for me then or whatever I'm getting. So I was going to get garlic parmesan because that sounded pretty good if you're at a place that knows how to do that. So I said, garlic parmesan wings of some sort, you know, so they got it. It smelled pretty good. They faked me out. The smell was all right. I pulled around to the side, I opened it, and I looked, and I thought, man, number one, I don't know what part of the bird them nuggets came from. Is there a part of a bird that's just called the nugget region? And that's where all the nuggets come from. Because that's what it looked like. I, some, one of the nuggets looked like a Louisiana State nugget, and then, I mean, you're in trouble when the nuggets, like, they start looking like states you've been visiting. And, and they're crazy looking. And then you break one open to see, is that all white meat? And it's like gelatinous and looks more like a Boston cream effect. And you're going, man, I don't know if I want this or not. Man. So it, when they came out, it had that feel to it. And I looked, it was a lot of bread. And, and I could see what they had done, is they had just taken the nuggets. And the way they were going to do a garlic parmesan feel on it is they were just going to throw a bunch of sauce on it and whatever and then call that garlic parmesan. So I opened it and, that, and I know that's what they do. But the problem is they didn't even shake it up good. So there was no garlic parmesan. There was just this one weird yellow, actually a tan, more of a taupe uh, glob glob of garlic parmesan goo just sitting there and I got I opened it up and Gina goes and, and it's always good when your wife you know twists the knife and she goes I told you that's nasty I knew it. and I said well and she goes but hey you know it's checkers and I just said I don't care whether it's checkers or whether it's a steakhouse this is unacceptable <laughs> And she said, well, what are you going to do? And I said, you're going to get out and take it back up there. <laughs> so she goes, I'm not doing that. You're the one that wanted to stop here. And are you really going to flip out over nuggets? And I said, I'm not going to flip out over nuggets. It's just that if we settle on these nuggets, yeah. it could be something different tomorrow. It could be something bigger and more consequential. Come on, so we are going to have a speak the truth in love moment with Checkers management about this goo that got stuck in my box with my breaded nuggets. 
And so I pulled up. And oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. We just ordered a five piece. And it took 30 minutes for them to bring the mystery glob out. So we pull through. And now Gina says, are you going to confront them? And I said, yeah. <laughs> The confrontational pastor like on a Sunday, really serving it up to the checker staff. Boy, I'm bold, right? And I just go, listen, I said, I want you to look at this because I'm trying to be, a, it's a teachable moment. I said, I want you to look at this. Look, and she goes, oh, you want more sauce? And I go, no, hon, look, I got plenty. I mean, it just looks like the sauce boss came. And she said, well, you don't like them? And I said, you didn't do anything. I said, it's ridiculous. I said, it's, I, I really just need, I, re, I need them done like right. And she goes, okay, well just pull around and just, and I'll bring them out to the parking lot again. And we were going to do another 20 minute odyssey for nuggets. And I said, no, I'm not pulling around again. I just want you to shake those nuggets up and give them to me. Do them right. Gina goes, boy, that was pretty forceful. And, and then all of a sudden the lady comes back. Here you go. It was so fast. Even Gina goes, man, is it that fast for them to shake those nuggets up like that? It was so fast. It was literally like they must have ordered them from Jesus. And he was like, get them, John. You know, Jesus like. And they were there. And the nuggets were there. And I pulled around. And it was like my moment because I was victorious in that moment. I did not settle. And I got the nuggets. And I opened the box. And when I opened the box... The sauce was spread around okay, but guess what, folks? They were still Checkers Nuggets. Yeah. They were, it wasn't Ruth's Chris, but you know what? I felt really good about my, and when I drove away, I'm a good guy, I'm a good husband. I'm, I like my little husband treats, and I'm driving away, and I always, when I'm real nice, I go, see, Gina, I didn't flip out. I was really nice with everybody, and she goes, no, honey, you didn't flip out. It was really good. Let's go. And I said, well, at least I didn't settle. I didn't settle. It, in other words, I found a way to tell the people there, hey, I paid for this, and this is a service you provide, so could we at least like spread the sauce around a little bit to where it's not just gathered up here? Can we just get that right so I don't have to settle? I'm not expecting you to give me a filet mignon. I'm just wanting the nuggets the way they look on the... You don't even have to give them to me the way they look on the picture. Just give me the nuggets! You know, they don't have to be perfect. Just, just give me the nuggets. But the bottom line is they're still nuggets. But if you're at Ruth's Chris and it's a prime rib, then it's a prime rib. What am I saying? You don't get in the habit of settling either way. You don't have to. The enemy has sold the body of Christ a lie, and he said, you've got to settle. You might not have to settle here, but down the line, you have to settle here. The enemy will say, you might not have to settle here, but really to have everything you want in God, eventually you're going to have to settle. I am telling you, that is the Antichrist gospel. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. And the Bible says that it was for freedom's sake that He set us free in the first place. He set you free just so you could know what a party it is to be free in Him. Hey. That's what He did. But the enemy wants to keep you locked up and bound up so that you never complain about your nuggets. You don't even have the faith, nor do you think you have the right to ever even open up your mouth because how dare you say anything. But can I tell you, that's not the way we do with our own children. My children have the right to talk to me and they can reach me and they can get me to change my mind on things. I'm telling you, we have rights as children of God and we don't have to settle. He said we have not because we ask not. Amen, amen. So many people walking around with no breakthrough. Why don't they have breakthrough? They didn't ask for breakthrough. My God. People walking around in poverty and lack. Why are they in poverty and lack? Because they didn't, they didn't know how to ask. I, I encounter people all the time that are frustrated with God. Uh, let me just ask you by show of hands quickly. How many have ever been frustrated with God? Yeah. I've been really frustrated with God. I have been so frustrated with God. I've been so frustrated with God that 
There were times that I blamed God for things in seasons of my life, only for me to get past those seasons and to find out that I was blaming him. But the reason that I was where I was, it wasn't his fault at all. I put myself there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Can I also tell you that this idea of having a spiritual covering, you might think it is an idea that's old school. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to tell you, you need to have one. Come on. Amen. Man, Man we'll go preach to the guitar or something. Amen. I said, you need to have a spiritual covering. Amen. Yeah. I'm not pushing to be your spiritual covering, but you better have one. You, you really need one. And, and I will tell you, if you, don't, if you really don't have somebody that you can call in the midnight hour that is a covering. Now, what's a real covering? A covering is someone who, a real covering. Now, there are guys that run cover for coverings. <laughs> there are. But a real covering, as I've always known it, is... When, there's, when it comes time for you to hear from my covering in a real way, anytime it's ever needed to happen, I dial them up because they've known me for 25 years. And where most people may not know how to handle me in a situation, most people, I'm at a place right now in my ministry where uh, I've got to get with my covering in the next two weeks. My pastor, I've got to get with my pastor in the next two weeks because I need to talk to him about some things that are going on in my life. And you say, well, what's going on in your life? That's for me and my pastor. What I can tell you is that when he talks to me, you can ask my wife, when he talks to me, he has a way of communicating to me that not even my own, uh, no, my own father has a way that he communicates with me and he gets to my spirit as well. But my pastor has a way that he communicates with me that rings true in my spirit as well. And he gets incredible results out of me. And, and I, he knows me. And I will tell you, you need covering. You need someone who covers. Yes. But it's got to be more than just a theme or a word. Or when I say covering, see, it's not just a buzzword. I'm not just talking about something. But you'll hear some people that talk about covering and they'll say, oh yeah, that guy's my covering. And they're no more a covering for this person one way or another. But guess what? Can I just say this? There are a lot of Christians that do that from church to church, right? Yeah. You see, I'm telling you about what ministers do within the framework of ministries, but guess what? Don't get too mad at the ministers. They just got it from what church people do every week. Right. You got church people running around. How many times have you seen this, right? And we, we've seen it a bunch over our time where you you go to a church and you never miss ever, right? And you run into somebody and they start talking as if they never miss church at all, right? And they're telling you all about church and how amazing it is. And they're telling you all about how incredible their church is and how fantastic it is. And then have you ever seen that same person and you realize they don't even go? They're never there. In other words, they're just talking about that church, right? Right. And as a minister, we've had it happen so many different times to where I've gone, and this is a, an, an odd thing, where I've gone uh, hanging out with a pastor, I'm hanging out with one of the pastors I'm ministering with, and let's say I've got a friend that I think maybe goes to his church, and I'm talking, and I'm going, well, you know, so-and-so goes to church, and I can't tell you how uncomfortable it is, but it happens a lot where the pastor will go, oh, no, man, I mean, I know who you're talking about, but, man, he hadn't gone to this church in like five, ten years. But you just talked to them last week and they made it sound like they never miss. And yet that's the only church they go to. But what am I telling you? In other words, there are a lot of people that go to a church and they say that's their place. And they make it as if that's their covering and that's their pastor. But let's just be really, uh, let's be honest about it. That's really not their church and he's really not their pastor because he doesn't even know them. And, and he doesn't even, and some churches get so large, can I tell you this? They, they don't even know when the people are missing. They wouldn't even know that you were there or not. They wouldn't even know you had a tragedy in your family if it weren't in the newspaper first. Right. 
But yet you want to go to bed and think, well, they just love me so much and I'm so special. And I'm not down on the church. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to empower you as a believer. And I'm telling you, it's more than just going on a Sunday. It's more than Keith Green used to say, going to church on Sunday doesn't make you a Christian any more than going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. All right. But it's true. You have a lot of people that are going to a place, but you can go. Here's the key. You have to get all this stuff that we talk about. You've got to get it in you. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. You've got to know that you are victorious. Yes. Amen. You've got to know that there's a guarantee on your life. You, you got to know that when you walk into a room, Forget about being a credentialed minister, although that's all right. But when you walk into a room, you got to know that you're going to be able to touch heaven for that family or for that person. Can you say hallelujah? I mean, it's real serious kingdom business. Yes, it is. How many want to live with heaven's guarantee on your life? Yes. Amen. We live in a place, Gina and I do, of faith. To where if I always say, if probably most people knew it, they wouldn't even believe it. They just would not believe it. If people knew what we believe God for, the way God brings it in, and the way God provides. I want you to just put your hand on your heart, lift one hand to heaven, and I want you to just thank God for providing. Thank you. Just thank Him right now. See, the Lord just said, David, have everybody start praying in advance for provision. Thank Come on, just right now, just start praying in Thank advance you, for provision. Thank you, Lord. In advance. Thank you, Lord, for providing everything. In advance of the blessing. Spiritually, mentally, emotionally, financially. Thank you, Lord, for providing. And I will tell you something. I will tell you something. We have made, we have made a habit in our life of number one, being covered, we have made a habit in our life uh, from day one in our marriage, from day one, uh, we didn't just tithe. We wanted to be the kind of people that, uh, Gina's a natural just blesser and giver. Uh, she's just an amazing over the top blesser and giver. And I'm a blesser and a giver. We both have big hearts in that way. And we, uh, we're not unlike any normal believer in the sense that just like everybody else we read the word and we understand that there is a thought pattern and 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 uh, scripture passages that lead us to believe that you know uh the tithe bring the tithe into the storehouse and you know and um and i believe it's important to bring the tithe into the storehouse but can i just say this i believe it's important to bring everything into god's storehouse Amen. don't just bring the tithe into the storehouse if you've ever done store, real storehouse work, you bring everything into the storehouse. Right. You account for everything in the storehouse before anything goes out of the storehouse. Yes. You bring it all into the storehouse and it's out of the storehouse that it all goes out. Right. If you were with me in Guatemala, you'd know. When you got $23,000 worth of groceries that are being put together wow. and you got to get $23,000 in groceries all... Now, how was it? All prepackaged for each family. So what does that mean? That's a lot of groceries. What does that mean? There are a lot of guys that are going to be counting a lot of bags, making sure everybody's got the, the stuff that's supposed to be in those bags, and it's all got to be counted out, and it's all got to be put together, and it's all got to be wrapped, and if one of the wrappings is loose, you got to reinforce, you got to get it all stacked away. Then... Just to do the outreach and to get the stuff out, you got to line it all out in the storehouse. And then there are the ones that are going out and being shipped and the stuff that stays behind. In our case, nothing stayed behind. But had we ha if had we had like another back-to-back, -back, we would have had our storehouse full again. And they have had it full again since I've been gone on several occasions. Full again, only to go back out again. But if you understand the way a storehouse works, everything comes into the storehouse and then goes out of the storehouse. Are you getting the picture of it now? Yeah. So this is what I'm telling you. Again, another lie that religions 
uh, try to force on us. They try to get you to give 10% to God. How many think God wants more than 10% from you? Everybody's scared now because you thought, oh man, that's your life struggle. Oh, it's the 10%. I don't want to let it go. I don't want to let, oh my God, he just said God wants it all. No, no, he wants it all. You, you understand? Do you really, do you really want to be that guy at the party? Do you want to be that guy at the party? Would you ever throw a party back in the day when you were a partier and have your friends over and say, what would you like? You want a cold one? Here you go. And then as they start going, say, now we marked with a little marker on the side of the glass. You won't go down past that mark, okay? We want to just, that's where it's going to stay. You would never do that. Because it's, you know, you're not going to have a party with weights and measures with your friends and go, hey man, you drank a little too much. Hey, that's below the red line. You're not going to do that. But when it comes to giving in the house of the Lord in the storehouse, that's all we ever do. Well, well you didn't get your 10% in? Did you hit that 10%? No, man, I'm just struggling. I'm, I'll be honest with you. Pastor, I, can't, oh, I mean, I, I, it's a lot for me to even be able to do 2%, you know, 2%, you know, 2%. And then you got some people that are like, 10%, man, 90%. 100%. And then you got some people that want the people who believe in God blessing them and being blessed and sowing and reaping and seed time and harvest. Some people want everybody to shut up, talk about seed time and harvest. <laughs> you don't talk about seed time and harvest anymore. They, people think all you have to talk about is money. Hey, why are you talk about money? Because everybody keeps coming to us and saying, hey, can you break poverty off of us? So we think maybe if we're going to break poverty off of people, maybe if we started living by God's laws, we wouldn't be impoverished anymore. And here's another thing. When we give, it's worship. It's not bondage, it's worship. Amen. If you really love them. Yeah. Right? Right. I mean, my kids, when they... What happens is, my kids, they always pay a little tax, right? Uh, I have fun with my kids. Uh, the, but the way I tax them sometimes is, I've just got a lot of street in me, you will have to know that. So I tax my kids. <laughs> And I use words that you probably wouldn't use with normal kids. My kids are real street. In one sense, they are. You know, you just have to know them. But my kids all the time, they're, I tax them. So if they do a little job for me, now I'll bless them. But then I always find a way to tax them. They're going to pay the piper. So in other words, if I give you a 20, get ready. You're probably going to lose a five out of it. That's just the way I mess with my girls. So in other words, it's 20 that they would have never had, but at least they're going to give the five back to me. Now, Really, I want to give them that five back, but I like to hear them gripe. How many understand what I'm saying? I just like to hear them go, you can't do that. Why you can't do that? You know, and but my kids, my kids uh, understand that there is a law of sowing and reaping. They understand. They work, they work hard. All my kids work hard. Faith right now works a job. Right now, already working a job, taking care, working in the nursery at church and gets paid once a month and does this job and absolutely loves it. All my kids love to work. But I will tell you, it's never about the weights and measures of the 10% or the 20% or the... You have to understand that worship or, or that giving is worship. He, he wants it all, but yet... The thing that really breaks us into breakthrough is when we realize that you can't ever outgive him. And here's the other thing. When you understand what's released when you give, then you just start to understand heaven's economy on it. I can't tell you how many times we right now are living in blessing and we are living in victory. Everybody say victorious. victorious. We are living in victorious victory just overcome overflow sometimes because of different seasons we've walked through and we were faithful when we walked through those seasons and nobody else knew nobody else had to know but we knew and so we have tested the lord with giving and we've seen the lord faithful yes. and so with our children we've encouraged them and they've tested the Lord with their giving and they found the Lord faithful. And I would tell you that one way to release victory in your life is to, I believe, the love of money is the root of right. evil. It's the love of money. Right. But I will also tell you, you can use money to do amazing things yes. for the kingdom. Yes. 
just know this, the lover of our soul is Jesus. Money is not the lover of our soul. All money is, is a way for us to do what we need to do. It's just a currency. But can I give you another thing? When you give, you are exchanging. Now, this is what's going to really bless you right now. Just stretch your hands to heaven today. I'm going to release this in this room. See, what I'm releasing right now to you is the currency of heaven. Because, see, when you give as a believer, what you really do is you're saying, yeah, this is just, this is a chariot or a horse. What I'm really interested in is the life that comes from heaven. I'm really interested in that life, that life spring of abundance of there. So, uh, you know, it's not just about that. It's about the breaking of the dam and the opening up of the floodgates of heaven and releasing the floodgates of heaven and releasing the blessing of the Lord in just an outrageous way. So right now I speak and I say that it is out of your obedience. Hallelujah. I speak over you today. I, some of you just need to start praying right now. I speak over every block, blocked area in your life. For every area that's been blocked. I also speak to fear. Some have fear in your heart and in your spirit. And you're beset by fear because you're afraid to get in the storehouse because you're not sure what's required of you by the Lord. And the Lord says, I am breaking fear off of you. Don't be afraid to come into my storehouse. And the Lord says, don't be afraid to come into my storehouse. And don't be afraid to come beyond the veil. And the Lord says, I am calling you to live beyond the veil. I am calling you to live beyond the veil. I am calling you to live in the more of me, says the Lord. I am calling you to live girded up on eagle's wings. I am calling you to live with those hinds feet. I am calling you to come beyond and go beyond what you've known as a comfort zone and years pass and days gone by. And I'm saying I have something fresh for you, says the Lord. And I am going to bring you into a place of breakthrough. And I am going to bring you into a place of bountiful blessing. And I am going to bring you into a place of realness and wholeness, says the Lord, that releases an element of victory in your life that causes causes people that have known you for many years, they will just shudder at who you are now. For the Lord says, I am causing my spirit of might. Stretch your hands to heaven now. I am causing right now my spirit of might to enter you. You won't do one thing, but yet my spirit of might will go with you. You won't take one step that my spirit of might will not accompany you. You will not be able to move forward, backward, to the side or to the front that my spirit of might doesn't go with you and encapsulate everything that you do. The Lord says, I am upgrading you. I am activating you. I am releasing you. I am sending you. I am saturating you. I am marinating you, says the Lord. And the Lord says that there will be a difference that you're going to see. The Lord says in the next three... Oh, shot on my seat. I'll just tell you now, the Lord says in the next 72 hours, especially today, today starts, this is what I'm seeing in my spirit. The Lord says over the next 72 hours, it's the same thing that was when uh, my son was in the tomb. The same effect that when Jesus was in the tomb and people couldn't see where the glory had gone, the glory was hidden from them, what was going on inside that tomb. The Lord says there's something going on in the tomb. And the Lord says that which is dead is now coming to life. And the Lord says find a way to activate your seed. Find a way to find that which is precious to you and put it in a raft and send it down the river. Find a way to get your bread on the water. Find a way to activate your account in the Spirit. Find a way to plant your seed. Find a way to bring your first fruits to my table. And as you do that, the Lord says, I will release to you that which is bountiful, that which is productive, that which is overflow, and that which is breakthrough. For I am calling you out 
of the masses. And I am giving you a divine upgrade by my spirit, says the Lord. Do not fear me. Just get out on the water and believe that I will multiply your seed beyond beyond what you can even imagine. And I see a great first fruits multiplication going on today. Thank you, Lord. And I see a dividing also. And I hear the Lord saying, you, Who Lord. will? <coughs> Who will cross Jordan? Thank you, Lord. Who will cross Jordan? Thank you, Lord. Who will cross Jordan? Just stretch those hands and just say, Lord, I will. I will. I will. I'll cross the Jordan. I'll cross Jordan. I'll cross from doubt into victory. I'll cross from blindness into crystal clear vision. I'll cross from deafness into being able to hear with great accuracy. I'll cross from no vision into unlimited vision in the blueprint of heaven. I'll cross from no inheritance into my divine inheritance. Thank you very much. I will cross from life into abundant life and I will cross from rest into ecstasy in the Spirit. Somebody say hallelujah. Lift up a mighty shout to the Lord. Lift up a better shout than that. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Stretch. Yes, Lord. It's been a year. It's been a year. I'm going to close. It's been a year where many ministries that we know, many, have all but shut down this year. People we know, people we love, and I really want you to hear this. Um, we had a word spoken over us that we were going to be a... Gina and I have always been restorers. We've always been people that restore people and get them back on track and doing what they're called to do. And We have had so many different ministers this year that have been in need of a restoration touch. And... There have been some ministers that I believe in greatly that have been on the sideline. Personal reasons, different things. Uh, Alan Davenport, his mother just passed away. And that just, just be praying for him. You know, his mother and father actually uh, came to some meetings that we've done. And, and, you know, we just love the Davenports big time. When I think about Alan, I think about Brenda, and I think about their family I also realize they've really been through a whole lot. You know, we've seen people really shaken. You know, Alan was pastoring a church and was a, it was a district appointed church for the assemblies and then all of a sudden they just removed that appointment. How many know that's pretty traumatic when you're in one place and then all of a sudden your family's just basically kicked to the curb? That's a traumatic thing. Would you raise your hand and say, yeah, that's true. that's right. And then only to find out that your mother's been, you know, Alan's mother's been very ill for many months now. We know what that's like because Gina and I had her father dealing with cancer. And I'll just tell you, we've, we've really, we, we have a heart for folks. We have a heart for people. We, we love Alan's ministry big time. It's been a big blessing to us. He's spoken some very amazing prophetic words into us. And today as I was driving in, I just thought, you know, I feel like the body of Christ, especially our group right here, you know, I think we need to be a little uh, aware that there are some friends among us and people that we've known that have poured a lot of, into us that are going through some things. And so I told Alan today we would pray for his family and I want to pray for them. Would you just stretch to heaven right now? And yes. Father, I pray for Alan. I pray for Brenda. I pray for destiny. I pray for Alan's father that as they're dealing with this death, many people might say, well, you know, he had a lot of years with his mother. Well, that's true, but it's just such a traumatic thing when you lose a, a parent. And so, Lord, right now, I just pray for the peace that passes all understanding. And I just speak a blessing. And I speak manifold blessing over Alan right now. Just strengthen him. Give him the strength to be able to do whatever he's got to do. As it, uh, whatever the duties of a son are in this moment. That he would be able to do that and fulfill that. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. Everyone said hallelujah. Hallelujah.
I just felt to do that. It's been a year where we've been really also pressing in for a lot of people that, a lot of ministers that have been through a whole lot and we've been pressing in and behind the scenes we've been getting a lot of people healed up and restored this year. Hallelujah. How many believe God's a God of restoration? Yes. Yes. Can I just tell you, there are a lot of young guys that I help train and teach in ministry. And can I tell you, they don't always do the right thing. But can I tell you, I don't give up on them. Amen. How many are glad I don't give up? How many are glad Jesus never gave up on you? That's yeah. right. Can I just speak and just tell you something right now? You need to speak to those things that are not as though they are. Yeah. That's what I'm getting to. Amen. You need to speak to the impossible situation. And you need to say, not only is it possible, it's happening. Can you say hallelujah? Yeah. Yeah. Now, when it comes to giving today, some of you need to give your seed an assignment. And I, I will tell you, I will tell you, when it comes to giving your seed an assignment, I have always been the kind of person that says, you can either just half-heartedly give, or just be disconnected mentally and spiritually when you give, or be fully connected. I will tell you I am fully connected when I give. I will also tell you that I give my seeds an assignment. When I'm believing for God to do something, I will literally step out in faith, and I will, whatever the Lord puts on my heart, sometimes it's a prophetic amount. I mean, I've had the Lord speak to me, and we've seen it just this week. We have a friend who, I saw it just this week at work, where they said, David, you're never going to believe it. I gave this, and look what happened. And you could literally see that he had given in obedience to what the Lord had said, because the Lord had spoken to him in regard to fives. And, and five, how do you know that's grace, right? And God had spoken to him that there was a special grace on his business. So the Lord spoke to him and told him to sow a seed. Isn't this interesting? The Lord said, I want you to sow a seed. And this particular person has never been a big sower and, and a giver. But the Lord said, I want you to give. And he said, well, Lord, I'll give if you tell me the amount. And my friend said, the Lord just spoke as bold as he's ever heard the Lord say anything. Give 500. And my friend said, Lord, I didn't come prepared to give 500. And God said, that's the problem. You don't come prepared to ever activate and step out of the boat and meet me in faith. And my friend said, okay, Lord. And he just rebuked fear, wrote a check, sowed 500. He said, David, I am telling you right now. He said, I've never seen anything like it. He said, I am on my, he said, I wasn't out. This, by the way, this wasn't my meeting. So everybody's going, Oh, Pastor Dave, five hundred dollars. That's awesome. Church got blessed. Oh, this wasn't our thing. He was giving a testimony. He said, "David, I am telling you." He said, "I sowed that seed. Nobody knew that I did it, and I gave five hundred dollars." And he said, "Within, by the time I had walked, they did the offering at the end of the service." He said, "By the time I got in my car, I got out to where my cell phone coverage was. I got an alert." Can you imagine this? This came on. He got an alert into his bank account. He thought there was some kind of fraud alert. He went to his bank account, and someone had already uh, given an advance on the, a job that he had put in for that he had literally, he didn't even think he was going to get the bid on it, and they had already gotten his account numbers and did the transfer, $50,000. Wow. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah? He obeyed in the giving of the 500. And by the time he got out to his car, God had turned that into 50,000. Isn't that amazing how God does that? Yeah, and you go, well, no, I don't know if I believe in that. You would if it was you. Yeah. You would. Yeah. You know, can I say this? we got to learn how to rejoice with other people. Yes. I rejoice with other people. Yes. i I, I got to tell you, is it okay if I just tell you something real quick? I rejoice when I see Clyde Kane doing good. Clyde's a friend of mine. Yeah. When I see Clyde Kane doing good and doing good things, and I see him on CNN or Fox or whatever, you know what? Everybody else may have their take on old Clyde Kane. And they, I got people call me all the time. They go, man, what do you think about that guy? He's different, man. I, do you, what do you really think? What's that guy's story? And you know what I think? I think I just love seeing God use him. I love it. I love seeing God use him. And I am so happy when I see my friends blessed. Can you say amen? amen? I mean, I want to see my friends blessed. I want to see people in the body of Christ blessed. I love it when one of our church folk or one of our friends comes cruising up and they go, look at this, Pastor. I'm not driving that heap around anymore. Look at this. 
Can you say hallelujah? I mean, I, how many believe that when God changes in one area, it can affect the rest of your life? It really can. And we need to believe God for divine upgrades. So when I give, I give my seed an assignment. And by giving your seed an assignment, what you do is you literally release the victorious Christ in your now. You release Him in your now. And that when you release the victorious Christ in your now, guess what happens? It's a Kairos moment. Because anytime Jesus is in the room, it's a Kairos moment. Can you say amen? Everybody say Kairos. That literally means Jesus coming near and you encountering Him and having a real encounter, having a Kairos encounter. How many want Jesus to come near today? Yeah. How many want every day to be a Kairos encounter? Yeah. How many want to activate that nearness? Yeah. So I want you to stretch right now. And I'm going to begin to pray, and I'm going to pray a few things. And one thing that I'm going to specifically pray today is I'm going to pray that God breaks down walls. Yeah. And I'm going to pray that God removes fear as yeah. well. Amen. And not only am I going to pray that God removes fear, I'm going to pray that there's a, uh, a flood. I, I hear the Lord saying there's a floodgate. I just keep seeing like a floodgate open. And I keep seeing it over... Uh, I'm assuming that's your mom, right, Bobby? Is that your mother? I, I see it over her. So I just want to be obedient and, and pray that. So just stretch your hands toward uh, our friend's mother there. And uh, we're going to pray for her because there's a blessing, you see. there's a, I just saw it. I literally saw it in the Spirit over the top of you. It was just like, a, like when you look through the clouds and the sun's kind of breaking through the clouds like that. That's what I saw over you. I saw the sun just breaking through those clouds. And I saw this amazing just sunlight surrounding you and this amazing warmth all around you. And I heard the Lord say, I, this is what the Lord said. He told me to tell you. He says, tell her not only is it going to be all right, but tell her that He is making all things new. So I am speaking to you, just being obedient as the Lord tells me. He says to tell you that He's making all things new. And He says that you're going to live under the warmth of that open heaven. And the Lord says that as you walk, just know there's an open heaven that you're under. So you're going to be in a season of open heaven. So you you can pray with more confidence that you've ever prayed for before. You can ask of the Lord things during this season that you've never been able to ask of before. Not quite like this. And you'll be able to do things supernaturally you've not always been able to do. The Lord says it's a season of open heaven. And for as long as you stay under that portal of my opening, the Lord says, I will just continue to increase my glory in your life. And the Lord says all things have become new. And the Lord says the enemy's tried to lie at times and tried to get you to think about the past. He's tried to get you to think about different situations and what you could have done differently to change them. And the Lord says don't worry about that anymore because now it's all about what I'm changing on the inside of you. And the Lord says I want to be patient to change those things on the inside of you just like a patient father. And you will know me as a patient father. And you need to know that as my daughter, the Lord says, I am pleased with you. I am pleased because I don't, I'm don't. i not pleased with you the way a natural father would be. I'm pleased the way a heavenly father would be pleased with you. Because you are my workmanship. You are something beautiful. You are something priceless. You are something wonderful. And where the world has tried to waste you and tried to get you to swerve off the path, the Lord says... You've just stayed. And the Lord says, I'm going to put you in a nest to where no fowl, nobody from the floor, nobody from the ground, no, no the, the beast of the, the fowl of the air, nor the beast of the field can do you any harm because the Lord is completely putting a force field of the glory around you. And the Lord says, from this day forward, even tonight, when you lay down tonight, I just see you making a phone call before you lay down tonight and say, I don't know what it is, but I feel the peace of the Lord on me. I feel the blessing of the Lord all over me. And I just release that peace and that blessing today and I speak that over you and I just reinforce open heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said hallelujah. hallelujah. Now stretch your hands to heaven right now. Father, we activate. Everybody say activate. activate. We activate our seed. We activate 
uh, we activate our seed, not only the seed we're sowing, but our verbal seed as well. Father, that as we speak something, we believe that it's going to manifest. When we pray something, we believe that it's going to manifest. When we say something, we believe that it's going to happen. Jesus, we say, fill our hearts with faith. Fill us with an overwhelming dose of faith that says we can accomplish it, we can do it, we can go there, we can push back darkness. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everyone said hallelujah. hallelujah. Lift up a shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Give your neighbor a high five and say yes, yes, yes. If you have your, your, your tithe or your offering uh, ready uh, to give, you just hold it up. Uh, we're going to receive that. Uh, you can give uh, with your credit card or check or cash or whatever. It's just right there. The only thing that we ask that you do is that when you do fill it out, if it's a credit card, fill out all the information so we know how to enter it the right way. But uh, we love you guys very, very much. And how many are excited about next week? Ooh, yeah. How many even? How many have been getting your emails? Wave at me if you have. All right. Go ahead, Neil. You can go ahead. How many have been getting your emails? Say woot woot if you have or yes. Hallelujah. How many know what next weekend is? We're going to be having a conference. Everybody say take the mantle. Take the mantle. How many know what a mantle is? Yeah. How many know what a baton is? Yeah. Uh, we could have just as easily said, take the baton. And I want to tell you right now that there is uh, an idea that when we get together next weekend, we've got special guests coming in. Uh, we're going to have Lee and Marty Ballinger here with us uh, this coming week. And it's going to be totally awesome. And uh, I'll just tell you who those guys are. I'm going to just pray that just stretch your hands toward this. Father, we just say, bless it, multiply it, increase it in your mighty name. And we just thank you that it's growing and increasing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So this coming weekend, Lee and Marty Ballinger are going to be with us. They're a husband and wife couple. Uh, we just now, this weekend, and I think this is a pretty cool milestone. This weekend, this coming weekend, will be 30 years of full-time ministry for me. Is that not pretty awesome? Hallelujah. 30 years. Hallelujah. And uh, even, my, even my own mom, she said, wow, time really flew on that one. And uh, I can tell you, it's been a fun 30 years, and a lot of our time has been spent with a lot of you, and we love you. And so this weekend is our 30 years in ministry. So for 30 years in ministry, we decided we were going to do something pretty awesome, something different. And uh, Lee Ballinger, uh, some of you have heard a song. You've, you probably grew up singing this song. Many of you, we have come into this house to magnify His name and worship Him. How many remember that? Yeah. We have come into this house. How many remember it? Well, Lee's dad, Bruce Ballinger, wrote that song. And so Bruce was a worship leader when I was first coming up many, many years ago in Houston and uh, ended up on staff as a support musician with Bruce Ballinger. And anyway, long story short, our church ended up in a revival, the same revival that brought Rodney Howard Brown to the world. And, and how many know who Rodney is? During that same revival, uh, I got up to sing on a Sunday night, and our sound man, who was a paid professional sound man, was in the booth at the back. And back then I sang with soundtracks, and I pointed at the booth for them to start my track. And when I did, the sound man disappeared. What I didn't know is he flipped backwards, did two somersaults, flipped backwards, the power of God hit him. He wasn't living for God, totally unsaved, got totally blasted, saved, delivered, set free, called into ministry, the whole deal. And that guy is Lee Ballinger. And so Lee ba and that was almost 25 years ago, and Lee Ballinger is going to be here this coming weekend with his wife, Marty, and uh, we are going to be doing the Take the Mantle uh, conference with them. They're going to be with us Friday and Saturday. My brother's coming in. And uh, we'll just have to see for those. Uh, here, cut that. Cut the, the video there, Neil. We'll just have to see, kind of celebrate with our friends and family the way we want to celebrate a weekend of 30 years of ministry. Amen. And so I just felt like I want my brother here. I want Lee Ballinger yeah. here. He was yeah. at the beginning of it. And, uh, and I think it'd be fun to have Alan here and, and also to, to be a blessing to him. So we're just, we're just really believing for an awesome weekend. 
But God has us here today. And what the Lord told me is he said, David, today's going to be an activation day. I told Gina that before we ever got going on the weekend. I said, man, Sunday's going to be an activation day. So I want you to stand to your feet right now. And uh, man, the spirit of the Lord is here in such a rich, rich, dynamic way. What I want to do, what we're going to do is I'm going to, we are going to pray uh, that uh, we are activated in the spirit. And that just like the song by Lauren Daigle, that the dry bones come alive. How many want the dry bones to come alive? Yeah. So I want you to stretch to heaven right now. And I just want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And I, I want you to, as you pray in the Holy Spirit, as you pray in the Holy Spirit, I want you to begin to just visualize areas of victory. In other words, where there were areas of defeat, now I want you to see them as areas of victory. Come on, just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. So Father, I speak over the believers your children, your sons, your daughters. And Lord, you've got something for us that's amazing for our families, for our children. And Lord, we speak, I, I speak this, Lord, over my friends that are here today, that next weekend would be an awesome party to celebrate 30 years of just amazing times in ministry. Yes. And then not only would that happen, but God, that we, our family, our friends, the people that are here, that we would take the mantle and that we would run with the mantle and that we would look back, that we would move in to whatever you have for us and that it would be the greatest season that we've ever known. Somebody say hallelujah. A season of victory. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap and a shout out. How many can say hallelujah to the king? Amen. Lift up another shout to the king. Hallelujah. So you, this week, let's just live completely fueled up. And I want to tell you, all week, be checking your emails because... Uh, we're going to make, be making some announcements this week. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a fun week. Yeah. And uh, and here's what I believe. The, the, word that, the two words that Gina and I keep getting in the spirit is full circle. How many are ready for some full circle victory? Yeah. 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 So we're going to, I tell you, Father, just go with us as we leave this place. And then we would go with your love, your peace. The peace is, passes all understanding, Lord. And Father, I pray that we would go with a sense of victory and yeah. gladness and the oil of joy yeah. would be our portion. And God, that everywhere we go, we just shine forth. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said hallelujah. Yeah. Find somebody, hug their neck, tell me love them. Yeah.